Oh, sorry, sorry. Translation. The very ancient science of the relationship with the Supreme is today told by me to you because you are my devotee as well as my friend and can, and can therefore understand the transcendental mystery of this science. Purport. There are two classes of men, namely the devotee and the demon. The Lord selected Arjuna as the recipient of this great science uh, owing to his being a devotee of the Lord. But for the demon, it is not possible to understand it, these great, sci great science. There are a number of editions of this great book of knowledge. Some of them have commentaries by the devotees and some of them have commentaries by the demons. Commentation by the devotee is real, whereas that, that of demon is useless. Arjuna accepts Sri Krishna as the supreme personality of Godhead. And any commentary on the Gita following the footsteps of Arjuna is real devotional service to the cause of these great signs. The demonic, however, do not accept Lord Krishna as he is. Instead, they concoct something about Krishna and mislead general readers from the path of Krishna's instructions. Here is a warning about such misleading paths. One should try to follow the disciplic succession from Arjuna and thus be benefited by the great science of Srimad Bhagavad Gita. Jai Srila Prabhupada. Jai Srila Prabhupada. <clears throat> okay, this, this is, an, this is an, another important verse here in the Bhagavad Gita. We should note the qualification of Arjuna to hear the Bhagavad Gita. Why did Krishna speak the Bhagavad Gita to Arjuna? Now, one may think he should be a Brahmana. Well, Arjuna is not a Brahmana. We know, of course, the Brahmanas are very dear to Lord Krishna. But there are other people also very dear to Krishna. And those are his devotees. And that is Arjuna's qualification. Arjuna is not a great scholar and he's not a great Brahmana. But he's a very nice devotee, and he's also Krishna's friend. They were close friends. Practically, they almost grew up together. So they spent a lot of time anyway together discussing philosophy. And it was an opportunity uh, for Lord Krishna to speak the Bhagavad Gita to Arjuna. So Arjuna's qualification, Bhaktosi me tsakacheti rahasyam he had utamam. Bhakta, he's a bhakta and he's also saka. Bhaktosi me sakacheti rahasyam he had utamam. The verses often quoted by Srila Prabhupada. Arjuna's qualification, he's a devotee, he's a bhakta, and he's also saka, he's Krishna's friend. Then Prabhupada makes an interesting point, which may surprise some, uh, some of us. You know, some of us, we think, oh, Bhagavad Gita is all very good, but not all Bhagavad Gitas are good. Some Bhagavad Gitas are commentary, are, are presented by people of demonic nature. They, pre they use the Bhagavad Gita to present their demoniac philosophy. So we should be careful in selecting Bhagavad Gita, what Bhagavad Gita we're going to hear, what Bhagavad Gita we want to study from, because not all Bhagavad Gitas are good and they're not all authorized. So some Bhagavad Gitas are presented by those people of the demoniac nature, Asurik Sampat, the, de the demoniac mentality. So these commentaries on Bhagavad Gita by the Asuras, they should be re rejected. 
you want to hear from people who are actually devotees. So this is uh, the, the point Prabhupada's making here, that we want to hear Bhagavad Gita from devotees. Not just anybody who's speaking on Bhagavad Gita. Oh, he's speaking on Bhagavad Gita. Must be good. No, we should investigate. What is his qualification? What is his authority? We should question, what, where is he coming from? Who was his teacher? Is he coming in parampara? Is he coming in the line of disciplic succession? We should want to know. One has to be careful. Don't just be sentimental and think, oh, it's all good. Everybody speaking Bhagavad Gita must be good. No, it's not like that. All right. Any All questions? Right. Uh, if I have a comment, uh, uh, Maharaj, I just myself, I, 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 try, I, I had some other Bhagavad Gita in my hand and trying to read it, but I find it so confused, you know. Um, the, the, the horses are the senses and the, there is a truth behind the light. And oh my God, I, I was thinking, what, what, a, what this person is, is talking about, you know. Uh, sure, I, I knew Bhagavad Gita of Prabhupada before, so for me it was clear. But uh, even having the light of Prabhupada, uh, um, presentation of Bhagavad Gita, I couldn't understand the other one, you know. The other one was very impersonal and no real clear meaning. I mean, th this is my, my own my own experience about trying to read some other Bhagavad Gita. Not not satisfying at all, completely. Yes, yes, I have the same experience myself. Mm. Mm -hmm. Before before reading Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita, I read Bhagavad Gita. I didn't understand anything. <laughs> Nothing was clear. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> That's just a, this little comment. <laughs> Guru Maharaj, uh, uh, there is some, I have seen a Bhagavad Gita like this uh, in India. Whatever happening is good. Whatever it will happen is for the good. Don't regret for the past like this. Uh, is this Bhagavad Gita, Guru Maharaj? No. I've never Hare read that anywhere in Bhagavad Gita. Hare Krishna. I would like to add to that what uh, Vaishnavi Mataji just mentioned. I have also he heard this in Bangladesh uh, many times that this is the summarization of Gita, what Mataji just said. <laughs> well, that means these people, they don't know Bhagavad Gita. They're presenting their version of Bhagavad Gita. They're not presenting the, the actual teaching of Bhagavad Gita. Whatever happens, it's for it's good. Say it again, Vaishnavi. Uh, whatever is happening is for good. Whatever will happen in the future is for good. And please don't regret for the past. It's like this, Guru Maharaj. I now also it's getting circulated. This kind of Bhagavad Gita, everybody likes this. Yeah, they all like this nonsense, all speculation, no, no truth in it. We have to learn from the past. That's the point. We have to learn from the past and we have to understand what is actually good. What is actually good? People talk about it's all for the good. Oh, it's all for the good. People are dying. People are getting drunk. People are going on drugs. It's all for the good. What nonsense. No, we have to understand that there are there is the philosophy for the demons and there's philosophy for the devotees and sometimes people of the demonic nature they will take the name of the bhagavad gita to present their own philosophy so this is nowhere in the bhagavad gita what is the message of bhagavad gita the message of the bhagavad gita is that we should surrender to krishna Bhagavad Gita is about surrender. First of all, giving up the bodily conception of life and understanding ourselves as a soul. 
and then recognizing Krishna as the supreme soul and surrendering to him. So we, we should not be tricked. We shouldn't be fooled by these kind of people talking these kind of things. Just nonsense. No meaning. Their own ideas. Okay. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. One, yeah, one more clarification. Guru Maharaj, last week we were discussing how the disciplic succession got broken because it was misinterpreted in between. Yes. Sometimes, right. Yeah, but uh, whether it will get misinterpreted in the disciplic succession also, Guru Maharaj, because what? Uh, I, whether uh, what it, the disciplic succession got broken because it got misinterpreted. It got misinterpreted by whom, Guru Maharaj? In the disciplic succession or by other people? Uh, I couldn't understand. Some people also ask me, what if they misinterpret in the disciplic succession? Because we can read Bhagavad Gita from the disciplic succession. And the, in the disciplic succession, can uh, somebody misinterpret Guru Maharaj? Maybe I'm not I'm a little confused about this. Well, disciplic succession, uh, it's passed, it was said the knowledge was passed through the line of saintly kings, rajarshis, right? Rajarishis, saintly kings. But in course of time, the knowledge was lost. So the, the knowledge was passed to the saintly kings, and the saintly kings would distribute it to the citizens, to the people in their kingdom. But in course of time, somehow, this knowledge became lost. Just like we know, uh, why did Lord Buddha come? Lord Buddha came because of the degradation of the Brahmins. The Brahminical culture was lost. What happened to the Brahmins? There were still Brahmins, but they had become corrupted, they had become polluted, they had become uh, materialistic, and they were encouraging people in the killing of animals in the name of a Vedic sacrifice. And so the Brahm they were Brahmanas in name only. They were not actually real Brahmanas. But they had the they had the name of Brahmanas, and they would say they were Brahmanas by birth, but they didn't fulfill the real duties of the Brahmanas. So the Brahminical culture was lost, and as a result, Lord Buddha had to come, and he had to lead the people away from the Vedic culture, to stop following the Vedas, and instead just to follow him. And by stop by leading them away from the Vedas. He led them away from the brahmanas. So you were asking, the knowledge was lost. What happened to the knowledge? Yeah, it, it became, it became uh, a speculation. And they took some other principles and emphasized some less important principle rather than the main principle. They would give more importance, for example, to going to the heavenly planets or to getting material opulence and sense gratification of some kind, economic development. They didn't think about real spiritual purification. They didn't think about liberation from the material nature. They were thinking more about enjoying the material nature. So these kind of things happen from time to time. Even in the Bhagavad Gita, we see sometimes in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna will speak. For example, in the second chapter, Krishna spoke about going to the heavenly planets. And he told Arjuna that if you fight and you're killed on the battlefield, you go to heaven. You will enjoy the heavenly planets. So Karmakanda is also there in the Bhagavad Gita. But it doesn't mean that karma kanda is the actual goal. But some people may take that 
path of karmakanda as being more important than the path of bhakti. Some people may take the path of yoga, the astanga yoga, or the path of uh, karma yoga. They may, they may take these other paths as being more important than bhakti. And they may come up with different reasons why bhakti is not possible in this age. And in this way, the knowledge is lost. And people become busy in other things. So even Vyasadeva, when he was writing all of his books, we know from the Srimad Bhagavatam that he'd written so many books and he had encouraged the people in the path of materialistic activities for material results, for their material benefit, that they could go to heaven, they can enjoy a higher, a higher form of life. But he didn't emphasize the real purpose of getting out of the material world and developing devotion for the Supreme Lord. And that was why Srimad Bhagavatam had to be written. So the Bhagavad Gita is like the prelude to the Srimad Bhagavatam. Bhagavad Gita conclusion of the Bhagavad Gita is that we have to surrender to Lord Krishna. I don't know how people get the conclusion of Bhagavad Gita that we should think that whatever happens is good. This is just, just com complete nonsense. Speculation. People talk these things. People, some, of course, materialistic people, they like to hear these kind of things. They don't like to hear that they're in Maya. They don't like to hear that they're doing a lot of nonsense. They don't like to hear that they, they have a lot of bad karma and they have to, they're going to have to suffer for it unless they do something quickly. They don't like to hear these things. They'd rather hear, oh, it's all good. It's okay. Everything is fine. It's such a it's such a dream, such an illusion. So we have to understand the truth. You have, if you want to hear the truth, the truth is here in the scriptures. The scriptures are for speaking the truth. Just like at the beginning of the Bhagavad Gita in the first chapter, what was Arjuna's thinking? Was Arjuna thinking everything is fine, everything is okay? Does Krishna tell Arjuna everything is okay, everything is fine? Nowhere in Bhagavad Gita is this. Krishna is telling Arjuna, you have to do something. I don't know how people can come up with these nonsense philosophies. And they do it in the name of Bhagavad Gita. Oh, Bhagavad Gita says, where? Show me. I'll show you where Krishna says surrender. That will come in the 18th, 18th chapter, <clears throat> almost at the end of the Bhagavad Gita. Sloka number 66. Krishna will say, just surrender to me and I will free you from all sinful reactions. So we don't hear anywhere in the Bhagavad Gita that, oh, it's okay, everything is fine. The Bhagavad Gita is about action. You have to do something. Why do you have to do something? Because everything is not okay. If you go on in your, the, the, your old ways, not following any principles of the, the Shastra, then you don't have a very bright future. You're heading for trouble. Right? Yes, Guru Maharaj. So how can we know that uh, we are getting the bona fide Bhagavad Gita? Uh, Guru Maharaj, like... 
Well, how, how, just like we, when we see our Bhagavad Gita, you can see everything is presented in a very systematic manner. First of all, the Sanskrit is there, the, ori the original text and the word meaning. And then the, so the, the meaning of each Sanskrit word is given and then is presented as a translation. And then we have the purport or the commentary on each verse. And these purports help us to understand. Now, th there may not be a lot of difference in the translation. Just like some people, they may write commentary on Bhagavad Gita and they may translate the Bhagavad Gita in a similar manner to Prabhupada's translation because the Sanskrit, all right, you know, it can have different meanings, but they may have similar meanings to Prabhupada's meaning, but the purport will be different. So the purport is very important. That without the purport, then we do not actually understand what is Krishna's meaning to the verse. It's difficult to actually understand each and every verse. So the purport is very important for us to go into the meaning of each sloka. And you will see that other people who have their Bhagavad Gita's, they have their purports. And their purports will be full of speculation and Mayavadi philosophy. And they'll talk about merging and becoming one and the light. They won't speak about Krishna. They won't speak about sur <clears throat> they won't speak about surrender to Krishna. They'll simply speak other things. So you can see <clears throat> Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita. It's that he's presenting not just his own. <clears throat> it's not just his own interpretation of the Bhagavad Gita. But he is presenting also the interpret the commentaries of other great acharyas coming in the line of disciplic succession. The knowledge is coming through the parampara. Now, if you look back just to the previous verse, we're on the third verse just now. If you look at the second verse, you can see Krishna used the parampara to pass on the knowledge. Evam parampara praptam. Right? Krishna is talking about the parampara. Krishna passed the knowledge <clears throat> of the Bhagavad Gita through the parampara, through the disciplic succession. Krishna used the system. This is the proper method of passing on spiritual knowledge. Pass it on from one person to another. What the, one teacher gives the knowledge to his students. And then his students will become also teachers and they will pass the knowledge on to their students. And in this way, the knowledge is distributed. This is the system of parampara. Remember, last week we read the example, you have a fruit, it's a valuable fruit. You will pass it down the tree from branch to branch. You won't just throw the fruit. You have to handle it very carefully. So the same way this knowledge has to be handled very carefully. You shouldn't change anything. When you change something, then the knowledge is lost. And that's what happened. And that's why Krishna had to come again. If you make a little change, then the little change goes on and becomes a little bigger and a little bigger and a little bigger. And in this way, the whole knowledge is lost. And Lord Krishna has to come again and reestablish the, and speak the Bhagavad Gita and reestablish the disciplic succession. Is it clear? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Clear now. Guru Maharaj, just a Dwarak DC here, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Just a, one more comment here. People also are asking the question, why the succession was broken? What was the reason? Is there no devotees coming along the way? And why Krishna has to come again to Opera Yuga to preach this to Arjuna? How do we respond to these kind of uh, uh, questions? Well, in the course of time, 
You have to expect these things. Just like <clears throat> when you put up a building, you can't expect the building is going to stay up forever. It's going to get old. One day you have to knock it down. You have to build again. Mm -hmm. So the same way, Krishna came, he taught the knowledge, he gave it to the people. He has to come again and teach it again. So it's quite reasonable to understand in the material world, nothing is eternal. So Krishna gave the knowledge. He gave it to Arjuna and people. But in course of time, Arjuna is not here. Other people also have come and gone. And gradually, in course of time, things change. And think, when things start to change, then the knowledge is not the same anymore. And therefore, Krishna has to come again. That's why Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Sambhavami yuge yuge. Hmm. Sambhavami yuge yuge. I come in every millennium, every age. So he comes. Just like the sun rises, you know, it's not like the sun just comes and stays in the sky one day. The sun rises and it sets. And then it rises again and then it sets. Why doesn't the sun just stay in the sky all the time? Well, we have to understand the nature of the material world. We don't like to just have sunshine all the time. We need also... We are happy when the evening comes, the sun goes down and the cool moon comes out. We enjoy the evening. And Krishna chose the evening to go and dance, Rasa Leela. So the same way the Lord comes again and again. He comes for the purpose of giving pleasure to his devotees. And he also comes to reestablish the principles of religion, if they're lost. So this will be the continuous cycle, Guru Maharaj. It will be keep on going on like that, you know, after Kali Yuga, they gain, when Sat Yuga comes in, it will be reestablished or something like that. Yes, uh, when Sat at the end of the Kali Yuga, Lord Kauki will come and we kill all, all the the remaining demons, and then the great sages will come down from the Himalayas, and they'll begin again Satya Yuga. And they'll begin Satya Yuga. The great sages will come and have good qualities. They'll do meditation and begin Satya Yuga. So in every age, different process according to the qualities. Kali Yuga people, they cannot do meditation. We don't have the, the quality. Mm -hmm. So the Lord has to come and he has to teach. He will come, he, we have Yuga avatars, right? And Yuga avatar, he will come in the Satya Yuga and he will teach people how to meditate. He will show them the example, how to do meditation. Just as yeah. Lord Chaitanya came in the Kali Yuga to teach everyone how to do Sankirtan. So the Lord comes in every age to establish the Yuga Dharma. In different ages, different process. Because people have a different nature. It's not all one. That's, you know, people are so foolish. They think, oh, it's all one. Everything that, why he has to come again? He should only come one time. No, he has to come again and again. Because things change. Nothing is stable here in this material world. Everything's unstable. We don't know how long everything can go on. You know, we think in terms of how we have the world today with the borders and the different nations. 
but a hundred years ago or two hundred years ago, it was different. And two hundred right. years from now, it will also be different. Right, right. Different nations, different borders, different things. Everything changes. So the Lord has to come. Yeah. Okay. The one more thing, Guru Maharaj. The, the uh, what I see uh, as I discuss with some of the uh, people, uh, not devotees, outsiders. There are two kind of interpretation on the Bhagavad Gita. Is one is on personalism, the other one is on the impersonalism. Those people, folks who are following on the impersonalism, like Maya Vodhi philosophy, they have a different version of this Bhagavad Gita. They don't accept Krishna as a supreme lord, and they try to speculate and give. They also God. Anybody can God. These kind of things. So that's why the two kind of version on this personalism, impersonalism. What is the comments on that, Guru Maharaj? Yeah, they have no right to touch the Bhagavad Gita. Right, right. They're impersonalists, right? They deny Krishna's personality, so they they have no right to to meddle in the Bhagavad Gita. But they take the Bhagavad Gita and use it to present their own foolish philosophy. Yeah, right. That Krishna didn't speak Bhagavad Gita to anyone. Krishna selected Arjuna. Why? Because Arjuna was a devotee. And he was Krishna's friend. He doesn't, he doesn't just speak it, to, speak it to anyone. He doesn't say, oh, it's all one. We're all the same. Oh, we're all one. No. No way. Krishna picked Arjuna to speak the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna makes a distinction. Who is the friend and who is the enemy? Who is the demon and who is the devotee? It's very clear in the Bhagavad Gita. But these people are such rascals that they take the Bhagavad Gita and they give their own nonsense interpretation. So we, we don't even talk to such people because they're so they're offenders. They're great offenders. It's a great offense to do like that. Right. right. To deny Krishna's personality and to deny Krishna's position as the Supreme. In so many ways, so many verses here in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is establishing it. And Krishna not only says it, but he, pro he proved it by showing the universal form, revealing his divinity. He did so many wonderful things. And these people, they just, oh, it's all, they say it's all just tales, it's stories, it's not real. There's no Krishna, and we're all one, and we're all God. Better not to hear from these people, better to stay far away. Because they're great offenders. And if you stand and listen to these kind of people, you will become offender yourself. Because they'll speak all their offensive nonsense to you. And your mind will become polluted by it. And they will think, you see, we're doing a good job. We're preaching to this guy. We're bringing him around to our way. So you don't want to be hearing from these people. You don't want to be near these people. Just stay far away from them. Yeah. Lord some, taught us yeah, some, that. Yeah, huh? Sometimes Guru Maharaj, sorry. Sometimes Guru, Guru Maharaj, when we do a preaching session, we don't know what kind of people they are. You know. So when we are doing the preaching, this kind of uh, response is encountered. And then uh, we are trying all our best to prove that Krishna is a supreme, he's a person, he's a person. And that's what he's given his guideline in the Bhagavad Gita to follow accordingly. So what you uh, people are telling is something uh, uncertainty. We don't know who is a God. You don't, know even, you don't even know what to follow, what direction to have. So this is in, uh, this kind of discussion going on. But such situation keep on continues. At what stage we can stop and then we come out or we continue preaching to them. They come to our preaching. They should come to here. Okay. They're not allowed to preach. We don't. We don't give them a free 
platform okay. to come and preach their nonsense. They yeah. come to our program, they should hear. Okay, they ask a question like that, we can respond to it. And we can okay. point out all the errors in their speaking. That Krishna doesn't say like that in the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna says, never was there a time when I did not exist, nor you, nor in the future will any of us ever cease to be. So Krishna is establishing his eternality. He exists eternally as an individual. And just as we also exist eternally as individuals, as spiritual beings, they cannot understand even the first teaching of the Bhagavad Gita. They're so ignorant people. And they come and they dare to speak. They dare to open their mouth. In the Bhagavad Gita, it's very clear. Arjuna says, Param Brahma, Param Dham, Pavitram, Param Ambabam. That you are the Supreme Brahman. You are the Supreme Abode. And then he said, not only do I accept this, but great Asita, Devala, Vyasa, Narada, we, they all accept that you are the Supreme. And Arjuna said, I also accept. But you people, you Mayavadi, you impersonal, you're so great. You know better than these people. Is that what they're saying? Asita, Devala, Narada, Vyas, and Arjuna, they're all wrong. Only these guys are right. That's yes. what they're saying. We're, we're wrong. Yeah, they can speak their nonsense, but they should not come to our platform, our place to speak it. Go and make your own program. Go outside and preach your own program. You don't need to come to our program. You already know everything. You don't want to hear us. So why are you coming here? Better you go and make your own center. Mm. Chase them out. They okay. simply come to give trouble. Yeah. Okay, I understand, Guru Maharaj. Gurudev, I had a question, may I? Okay. Uh, Gurudev, while preaching um, to uh, new people, and then some of them, uh, they say, but in your Bhagavad Gita, the Lord says that uh, one out of millions of people can only reach my abode in the whole universe, maybe one such person. And now because we're introducing chanting Hare Krishna, anybody can go, anyone can purify and make it. So they're saying, but then Lord Krishna should be the one who's speaking the truth, right? Only one, but over here. So that means... If they believe Lord Krishna's words, the Bhagavad Gita, that is, then this shouldn't be the case. So I, I don't know how to explain to them, Gurudev. They're so new. They're not yet able to accept that um, Lord Chaitanya is Radha Krishna together. How to deal with such people, Gurudev? I don't know how to explain in any other way. Well, you definitely don't want to be trying to speak about Lord Chaitanya being the combined form of Radha and Krishna. Mm -hmm. Definitely, mm -hmm. that's not for speaking to new people. Okay. You simply tell them to chant the Maha Mantra mm -hmm. and, and try to get some taste for the chanting of the Holy Name. Mm -hmm. And then we explain to them their spiritual identity, that they're not the body. That they're souls. Mm. So this is the program. First of all, teach who they are. Get them to understand their identity as a spiritual being. Mm. Get them out of the bodily condition of life. Mm. Thinking I'm the body. So chanting Hare Krishna. Yeah. Is, is Krishna said, Manusha, out of thousands among men, only one is endeavoring for perfection. Yes, we are giving the chanting of Hare Krishna to everyone, but how many people are accepting? That is a different thing. We may be offering the holy name, but how many people are taking it? We don't see so many people taking up the chanting of the holy name. There are so many people, there are many people, many living entities, but how many of them are chanting? 
Therefore, Krishna is correct. There's no contradiction. Out of thousands among men, only one is endeavoring. And of those who are endeavoring, hardly one knows me in truth. Why? Because many others, they may be endeavoring, but they get lost on the way. They become maya bodies, they become influenced by some other speculative philosophy, and they get diverted, they go away. So that's what happens. Mm. So it's rare that somebody actually comes to the goal to actually know Krishna in full and to surrender to Krishna. So there's no contradiction. Yeah? Oh, yes, Gurudev. All right. Gurudev, that means also, uh, like they're saying, they're asking. Um, that's, again, it's a bit, it's very difficult for me to answer them in a question like that. Um, that means if they don't take to chanting Hare Krishna, then there's no meaning for them to uh, read the Bhagavad Gita because they will not be able to go back up to Godhead anyways. So why not enjoy life? That is how people, you know, that is a comment that they've made. And I don't know how to answer again such a thing. And I just said, look, we're just giving you a very simple process. The Lord has presented it himself to relieve all of us. If we yet don't want to accept it, then it's really our choice, our free will. I, I just don't know, Gurudev, how else I should have answered. Well, they talk about enjoying life. What is their enjoyment? Now Corona, Guru Maharaj. Huh? Now Corona. <laughs> <laughs> corona virus is killing everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so where is the enjoyment? Yeah, where is enjoyment? <laughs> Every day anxiety, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> when where to go, how to come, whether to stay at home or go out. Fear, fear of going out in Malaysia <laughs> because of Indians. So what kind for of them, enjoyment, I don't know. For them, Gurudev, enjoyment is they can eat onion garlic food. They don't have to honor prasadam. They can just go outside in the restaurants and eat. And they're free to come home late in the night. They sleep till late in the morning. I mean, you know, general tendency that people have. That is enjoyment for them. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very low scale of enjoyment. Very low scale, right? <laughs> they don't know what is actual real enjoyment. Mm. They have no, no understanding of what is real enjoyment. Just because mm. they eat onion and garlic, they think that's enjoyment. To fill your stomach with all these very powerful, pungent food stuff. Tamuguna stuff. Yeah, and have your breath, your breath always full of this smell of the onion and garlic. And they go and eat in restaurants, food cooked by people. You don't know their character. You don't know their habits. You don't know if they have any level of hygiene or cleanliness. You go and eat in restaurants. You're taking great risk. This is their enjoyment. People are very foolish. Anyway. So I should not bother answering them. I mean, I. there's no other way. I mean, this is all right, yeah? What I told them. It's really, it's basically a simple presentation by the Lord, chant and purify. And it's really our free will if you want to accept this way. Otherwise, we are the ones ourselves closing the door. Can I just say that, Gurudev, or is that also too much? For I... Well, I mean, you have to know when to speak and when to keep quiet, you know. Mm, Some mm, mm. better just to leave people, you know, they, don't, they really don't want to hear. And if mm. you try to instruct them, you know, they take mm. it, they don't like it. So mm. sometimes it's better just to say, well... I'm happy, I'm okay. You do your thing, I'll do mine. Mm. And just leave them to it. Because All right, Gurta. They don't want to hear, they don't want to take your advice. They don't want to hear from you. They're not really interested in inquiring. Mm. Just let them do it. And 
So no, I'm happy, I'm fine, I'm chanting Hare Krishna. Mm. You have to do your thing, I have to do mine. Mm. All right, good. Vaishnavi? Yes, Guru Maharaj. So what are we going to do today? Are we going to read another verse or will uh, we Krishna? Um, should we go for another verse, Guru Maharaj? Yeah, we can do. We only did one. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Fernando Prabhu, do you want to read this verse, 4.4? Arjuna Vata Aparam Bavato Janma Param Janma Vivashtaha Katam Etad Vija Yam Vijani Yam Swam Ado Proktavani Ti Translation Arjuna said, The sun god Vivashwa is senior by birth to you. How am I to understand that in the beginning you instructed this sign to him? For birth. Arjuna is an accepted devotee of the Lord. So how could he not believe Krishna's word? The fact is that Arjuna is not inquiring for himself, but for those who don't believe in the Supreme Personality of Godhead or for the demons who do not like the idea that Krishna should be accepted as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. For them, only Arjuna inquires on this point, as if he were himself not aware of the Personality of Godhead or Krishna. As it will be evident from the 10th chapter, Arjuna knew perfectly well that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the fountainhead of everything, and the last word in transcendence. Of course, Krishna also appeared as the son of Devaki on this earth. How Krishna remained the same Supreme Personality of Godhead, the eternal original person, is very difficult for an ordinary man to understand. Therefore, to clarify this point, Arjuna put this question before Krishna so that he himself could speak authoritatively. That Krishna is the supreme authority is accepted by the whole world, not only at present, but from time immemorial, and the demons alone reject him. Anyway, since Krishna is the authority accepted by all, Arjuna put this question before him in order that Krishna would describe himself without being depicted by the demons who always try to distort him in a way understandable, ununderstandable to the demons and their followers. It is necessary that everyone for his own interest know the signs of Krishna. Therefore, when Krishna himself speaks about himself, it's auspicious for all the words. To the demons, such explanations by Krishna himself may appear to be strange because the demons always study Krishna from their own standpoint. But those who are devotees heartily welcome the statements of Krishna when they are spoken by Krishna himself. The devotees will always worship such authoritative statements of Krishna because they are always eager to know more and more about him. The atheist who consider Krishna as an ordinary man may in this way come to know that Krishna is superhuman, that is Satchidananta Vigraha, the eternal form of bliss and knowledge and that he is transcendental and he is above the domination of the modes of material nature and above the influence of time and space. A devotee of Krishna like Arjuna is undoubtedly above any misunderstanding of the transcendental portion of Krishna. Arjuna's putting this question before the Lord is simply an attempt by the devotee to defy the atheistic attitude of persons who consider Krishna to an ordinary human being subject to the modes of material nature. Hare Krishna. Hmm. So just as we were discussing these things for the last half hour or more, the same point Prabhupada is bringing up here in his purport, that Lord Krishna or Arjuna puts this question to Krishna. 
the, the sun god, because Krishna had said in the very beginning of the fourth chapter that I instructed this imperishable science of yoga to the sun god, Vivishwan, imam Vivishwate yogam proktavam aham avyayam. Krishna was giving in the first verse of the chapter, he said, I gave this knowledge to the sun god Vivishwan. And Vivishwan gave it to Manu, and Manu gave it to Ikshvaku, and in this way the saintly kings understood it. And so Arjuna is saying, how could you give the knowledge to the sun god? And Prabhupada points out, he said, pump people, they don't understand Krishna's position. They think of Krishna that he's an ordinary person, because we are ordinary people, we think Krishna is on our level. We are thinking Krishna is just like us. They think Krishna took birth and Krishna died. They don't understand Krishna's nature, that Krishna has a transcendental form. And, and this is why Krishna was able to give the knowledge to the sun god. So it's a very nice question. And Prabhupada has given a, a, quite a heavy purport about it, how so many people cannot understand Krishna's position. They're thinking Krishna is an ordinary person. Krishna is just like us. Look, he looks just like us. Oh, he's a different color, okay, but he's just like us. You know, he has a body like us, so his, they think his body must be material. They do not understand. Krishna has a body which is transcendental. His body is Satchit Ananda. But they cannot understand this. And they're thinking, no, it's all one, you, me, Krishna, we're all one. We're all from the light. We all become one. And it's all nice. Oh, yeah, sure. Just like people say, it's all one. If you go to heaven, you go to hell. It's all one, right? <laughs> they say that people talk like this. It's so, it's so nonsense. They have a Bengali saying, right? Yatumat tatapat. That you follow the paths, all the paths go to the same thing. Just nonsense, it's bogus, it's not true. All the paths don't go to the same thing. One path goes to Los Angeles, the other path goes to Bombay. They don't all go to the same place. But people have these nonsense philosophies. Oh, it's all right. Just do what you feel, what feels good. If you're happy, that's the main thing. If you're happy eating like a pig, having the habits like a pig, it's okay. Be like, okay, next life you become a pig. That's the point. People don't understand. We're sowing the seeds of the future life. So Arjuna's question is very relevant for us. You see, people don't understand Krishna. So therefore Arjuna, Arjuna knew, but he, he's asking this question for the benefit of these other people who cannot understand Krishna. He wants them to understand Krishna's transcendental position. Oh, it's a difficult job. Preaching is a thankless job. Nobody will appreciate you. Nobody will say, oh, thank you so much. No, everybody will argue and say, no, you're wrong. You're wrong. You've got it all wrong. It's not like this. Listen to us. We know. Very difficult, very thankless task. Prabhupada would say, to make one devotee, we have to shed gallons of blood. Just to bring one person to Krishna consciousness. Okay. So we'll chant Hare Krishna now. Yes, Guru Maharaj.
Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhatta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 H